Greetings everyone, my name's Flair Bliss and welcome to a really special video. Today we're exploring the weird, wonderful, wacky and charms of Eve in this entry of RPG Horror Memories. A series that explores what I believe are some of the most memorable games made in RPG Maker or Wolf RPG Editor. If you do like this video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already for updates on future videos like this one. And be sure to leave a comment down below regarding anything at all on this video, and put suggestions down for video ideas in the future. As the previous video straw poll was nearly tied between this game and Blank Dream, there won't be any straw poll lined up until the end of the next entry. Without further ado, let's explore the galleries of The intro right off the bat gives us with what kind of place we are going to. A gallery, of course. Alongside that, some parental care for our dear protagonist in regards to her handkerchief from their birthday. The handkerchief is sort of like your phone, wallet and keys before you go out of the house. It is an absolute essential item in the game of Eve. Keep it safe in your pocket and don't lose it. The visual style is quite simplistic and rigid when exploring around a game. Even the sketchbook itself has a little flair of rigidness when exploring around. You can modify objects like the paintballs so they move places, and tear or kick dolls so they change form, but for the most part in Eve, everything stays the same. You have a rose, which is probably the most influential item and inspiring item for current RPG Maker projects, an item that has a significant value to the character. Losing all the petals results in a game over, though most enemies are size the guillotine, certain portraits and the flowers in the dungeon scenario, nothing can instantly kill you. Which makes for a beginner friendly scenario if Eve is your first ever RPG Maker game on the scene. The game itself is segmented into several different areas, which are colour ordinated. Though was that the design choice of the architects who constructed the gallery? Or does it have some deeper meaning? I'm unsure. A mixed bag of surprises awaits around most corners in the game. Puzzle based conundrums or a betrayal by a certain blonde character Along with a few other miscellaneous NPCs coming out to play, I mean kill, are all wonderful things to witness and suffer. Style of the enemies as well are incredibly befitting for an art gallery. From sculptures to dolls, along with mean women half stuck in their canvases wants to eat the flesh or rose you have. Though at times, like in the labyrinth, certain enemies require a bit of learning experience to get how they move. Their pattern essentially. Without adult supervision, some words for Eve and Mary are too complex to read out, which makes for a unique mechanic of seeing things in different perspectives. Eve overall is a well built game with a soft visual aesthetic touch, with an artistic touch of horror to the show that would definitely make some people feel a little uncomfortable. Though, unlike other horror games, this one doesn't include jump scares, though some quick thinking is required along with cause and effect scenarios that affects later events. Like kicking a doll's body to oblivion with this as an example. Cheeky doll getting in my way? Puzzles in Eve start off incredibly linear and quite simplistic, like a pertin game chart essentially. With all the areas in the game being colour oriented, you know that in order to proceed onto another coloured area, you need to solve all the puzzles in the area you are in to progress. The difficulty of puzzles vary during the game, with a violet area for two having a two layered scenario where Eve and Mary are on the top floor with Gary being on the below floor. Tasks are required to be completed on one floor for the other floor to proceed, and it's something that has only been seen in Eve actually. Requiring for the main cast to be separated into two or more groups, and each group helps one another out without realising. In some cases telepathically, with numbers being an example, because how would Gary know what year the juggling man was born in, if it wasn't for Mary and Eve reading up the information, on a completely different floor? Game logic and it only works when an observer is watching over both floors. Us per player I'm talking about. Puzzles in Eve though are really nice, challenging and varying in variety. You don't have the same kind of puzzle and it's good to ramp up or tone down the difficulty each time. I'd say the puzzle in the sketchbook with which button to press in which order is the most tricky one as there are multiple consequences, both a puzzle resetting and a petal lost when doing so. Quick thinking is required for a rather fast falling scenario, when in the extra part of the game, remembering which planetary symbols did not appear could be a tricky one without some freeze frame. 
In total, you can say that there are a big amount of characters in the game if you consider all the NPCs in it as well. But for the appropriateness of the series, I believe that there are six main characters within, including Eve, Gary, Mary, Eve's parents, and Grotana. Yes, we are including the never seen artist and the lesser characters to talk about. Because if you think about it, he is an important person involved in the game, especially with his creations. Creations that we'll talk about when we get to each character specifically. Kicking off with Ebes, a silent protagonist that doesn't have much dialogue within the game aside moments when making choices. Usually ending diverging choices, which ends up the current path splitting off from two possible endings to just one possible ending for example. Ebe is nine years of age who wears what I'd call a traditional Japanese style uniform for lower slash middle school students. Ebe is associated primarily with the colour red throughout the game due to her rose colour and eye colours. Highly immune or oblivious to most events in the game that could be considered traumatic, there are times where you'd question the emotions which are going through Ebe's head. Definite answers are not there but could be that she's too young to understand certain events that transpire. Similar in a way to certain words she can't pronounce or understand, an age barrier is installed between the lines of understanding or just simply being immune to the scenario while knowing the consequences. Unsure. Though Eve does show emotion at times, particularly after being chased by dolls, or a certain Mary pinning Eve down near the stairs. When feeling an overwhelming state of negative emotion, she usually ends up hugging Gary like if he was an older brother to There are also times when Eve can calm Gary, when a sculpture creeps up from behind, for example, when they're looking in a mirror. Out of Gary and Mary, I would say that Eve shows more affection towards the older brother figure Gary than the equally aged sister Mary. Goes into but not limited to pushing statues, reading out words Eve can't pronounce, and protecting her from Mary when Mary becomes crazy. Eve's a character but doesn't like to leave either Gary or Mary behind, though implied due to her age, in the scene just after Mary takes off all the petals on Gary's rose, Eve thinks Gary is sleeping when in reality he's dead. Your reckoning will come soon enough, Mary. She, along with Eve, illustrate things that are usually creepy to be cute. Best example of the dolls that Gary sees, whereas Eve and Mary sees them as bunnies. Due to their perception of the doll being something like a bunny due to their age, or the inability to understand what it is due to their age is a complete unknown. Choices throughout the game ultimately affects the outcome of Eve. Favouring one character over the other, or not favouring either, affects both the journey and outcome for Eve. Showing great sadness for Gary when he lost in the doll room, Eve at this time probably also regrets making the wrong choices, thinking she was at fault for making Gary be like that. While threatened by Mary on multiple occasions, in the end Eve still shows sadness for Mary when her portrait was burned down, along with her turned to ashes. <laughs> A cute, compassionate, confident young girl, it is very obvious why so many of the RPG Maker community label Eve as their favourite game and Eve as their favourite character. Sometimes you don't need concrete answers, but the imagination to take over instead of what is wrong and right. Eve has around three good endings in the game and several bad endings including the four variations of Eve alone with a painting's demise and Welcome to the World of Groetana also being bad ones for her. You could call Forgotten Portrait a bad one too, but that's more for Gary rather than Eve. Oh, and speaking of Gary, he, unlike Eve, is a really expressive emotional person whose mood can rapidly change depending on the situation at hand. From the first moment where he met Gary, he grew a soft attachment to Eve like if she was a little sister almost that needed protecting. Always concerned about her whereabouts, displaying great remorse when the gang was separated due to stone vines. He would go to great lengths in order to ensure her safety and survival even if it meant costing him his own life. Due to Gary's old uh, age than Eve, he's able to understand words and concepts that Eve cannot, perceiving things differently through most parts of the game, including a rather suspicious book found in the same room as the painting called Separation, whereby the book itself contained material that Eve must not be exposed to until older, 
indicated when Gary shuts the book close. Gary, for his age, is quite mature and sensible, rather than opting for simplistic crude speech unlike other males of his age would. While his age is unknown, he is definitely at the age to make careful, meaningful decisions without personal gain. Throughout the game, Gary shows a dislike or fear even for dolls, mannequins, sculptures and other lifeless objects throughout the gallery. While Gary's fears for them could be something that was related in Gary's past or something that's brought up in the present, the game I mean, in the game. Getting his version of what he sees to Eve or Mary could change their perspective of what they see, though it wouldn't help in the slightest I would believe. Unlike Eve, Gary doesn't show much affection towards Mary. Before finding out Mary was a painting piece coming to life, Gary wasn't really fond of her in the beginning, particularly her childish behaviour. Gary has every right to feel uncomfortable, knowing that a humanoid being is with Eve, being a potential threat to both him and her. Gary's time could run out if he fails in the doll room. Whether if he is curable or not via Eve slapping him depends on if the green rabbit is present in the room. There are three good endings for Gary, and the rest being bad ones depending on if he's around for an Eve all alone ending. Exclusive of a forgotten portrait ending, a fabricated version of Gary comes to try and stop Eve from escaping the fabricated gallery. We'll talk more about the endings later on. All in all, Gary is another character that you can feel empathy for, especially if you are the shy kind of character which was nothing bad at all for being shy by the way, Mary, who's possibly the only character in existence of RB Jehova that I feel no regret incinerating into ashes. And if I had the choice, I would also dematerialize her from existence. Moving onwards though, our blonde hair once friend, then a threat, Mary is a character of similar age to not understanding the same words as Eve, Unlike Eve though, Mary has a cheery, unstable personality when it comes to general casual conversation. It is without doubt that between the three characters, Mary is the most inhuman along with being the most mentally erratic. Her objective since escaping from her canvas is to be free of the fabricated world and become human. Whether to erase Eve or Gary out of equation, she didn't seem to mind at all due to the lack of understanding on the consequences of killing someone. Indirectly with Gary or an attempt direct to kill on Eve, she didn't seem to mind who, though throughout the game Mary does show affection on more occasions to Eve than Gary. Her instability comes out when Gary discovers what Mary is and quickly tries to find a way out of the gallery without interacting with him. Mary views Gary as some sort of rival when it comes to the affection of Eve. If Mary met Eve before meeting Gary, that may have changed the face of the story entirely. Though, let's stick with what we have canonically. Mary views Eve as like a sister, and questions Eve on a what-if whim about if only two could leave, then who would Eve go with? I would pick with Gary, but that's just my opinion on that. Mary was created by Guo Atena as his last piece before he passed away, and quite possibly be the one he put the most passionate into. Mary thinks humanly and has human emotions and thoughts. Unlike Guaratena's other pieces that run rampant, Mary is definitely a unique artwork. She only has two good endings, with the rest resulting in her demise. Three versions of Ebor alone, along with a painting's demise, Mary's cranny, and promise of reunion being bad endings for her. Escaping the gallery and together forever, along with making two new friends in Welcome to the World of Groatana, we are introduced to a more forceful personality of Mary. A dubious character at least, Mary is a person who really wants to get along with both Eve and Gary, but finds it really hard to fit in when it comes to the rivalry of replacing Gary for the affection of While there is not much known about the three main characters of the game, there is even less told about the parents of E, which can be found within the real gallery at the start of the game, along with her mother being the parent in two of the four Eve All Alone endings, and her father being in only one. Eve's mother is a dearing, caring mother for Eve, who looks out for her and reminding her to keep things safe and don't cause any trouble or ruckus. She brought her daughter for her ninth birthday a handkerchief with her name embroidered on it. 
an unlikely gift for a nine-year-old implied by the father. The mother believes that she is sensible enough to look after it, implying that she is smart and responsible enough to have it. She is more mentioned in the game than the father is, but both, I believe, have an equal impact on it. The father, on the other hand, brought Eva Big Bunny for her birthday, though told in the game by the mother that she already has enough bunnies lying around. Though, truth be told, Eve does love bunnies, though. Though at times it could be indicated that the father is stuck in time when Eve first loved bunnies, rather than buying something different as she grows up. Only in Together Forever it is implied that Eve's mother and father have two children, Eve and Mary, whether you feel this is the canonical route of your choice is up to you. Showing that aside from mother, everyone is really hungry and ready to leave the gallery. I'm going to talk about Guaratane at more length pretty soon, as he's a character we don't see apart from one portrait in the dungeon scenario. Even then, we're clueless as to what kind of person he is. Like the previous entry of the witch's house, there isn't a great deal of story to behold in the game. Lots of stories foretold prior to the game taking place chronologically. The start of Eve, the game I meant, not her birth, shows that the entire plot is to be taken place in a gallery of sorts. A real one or a fabricated one for the majority of it. The game twists and turns with art overlaying the entire scenario of Eve. I would say, for the most part, that there is more story involving Guarotena than the rest of the game or the characters. Guarotena's creations did have the off chance of not just being a stationary thing, but something that has a beating heart, a life as it were. Usually when it comes to giving objects life, it would transpire down the route of alchemy, giving a doll, a portrait, or anything that does not have living emotions or properties, the ability to move, think and feel. Full Metal Alchemist anime or Atelier series games as an example. We would be here all day trying to decipher every piece that Guaratena has created, but for the most part we'll stick to the diary that we can find shortly after entering the violet area of the gallery. Avoiding the headless doll in the process, or dolls if you press the wrong button. Reading the diary entry out loud, it says that souls dwell in objects into which people put their feelings. I've always thought that if that's true, then the same must be true of artwork. So today, I should immerse myself in work so as to impart my own soul into my creation. Now that, in a nutshell, is the philosophy behind all his creations which he made when he was alive. Unknown about the cause of death, but his work had the ability to not just be display pieces, but also were life in itself. Though truth be told, the pieces that did come to life all but one harboured a singular object, which is to kill Eve slash Gary. The pieces in the gallery may all have only one of Mary's traits, which is to escape the gallery, or to just simply kill Eve and or Gary through resentment. The pair may be intruders to the gallery, as they never originated from there. You never see two pieces fighting against one another. It's a bit like a hive mind almost, where everyone connected to the mind has a single unified purpose, with Guotainer in the afterlife being a possible antagonist. Being the mind itself and directing them to kill Eve and Gary, while Mary is the only one not directly being under the influence of the mind. Just a theory, nothing else. Guaratena's pieces varied in different atmospheric subjects, from simple headless dolls to complex wine sofas and of course a humanoid-like being that can escape her portrait. The only other piece that Guaratena made that could have more soul and passion put into than Mary is of course the fabricated world, the piece that makes other pieces have life in the first place, the place where Eve and Gary are trapped for some time. A painting that has a living and breathing world inside it, but only chooses those which are deemed worthy of entering it. Or is it just an unfortunate outcome that the character was sucked into the world, parts of it are ever changing like the beginning. The gallery also played a punishing role for those who try to escape from it without eradicating the life of another, displayed in the 
a painting's demise ending, with which Mary tried to escape the fabricated world, only to find herself in a twisted version of the real world. No people, no joy, and only the notes of some writing to her about what she did was wrong. We never saw them prior to the Evil Alone endings, were the fabricated versions of Eve's mother and Gary. The mother telling Eve to not go with strangers, along with the regret of not wanting to see their parents again, something she would to a certain extent say in the real world. Whereas Gary said about a possible exit that existed within the gallery, that isn't the fabricated painting. In both events, the mother definitely disappeared along with Gary also disappearing probably off screen. How Guratana fabricated together duplicates of real world characters and put them into the game, who knows? But the same method with their other creations, so a full circle on there. There was also evidence of Guratina being aware of even their family due to that their parents were also in a portrait called Couple. Unless the painting itself was made within the fabricated world, or Guaratena himself is quite the dubious, suspicious character, we don't know. But to paint a portrait of someone's parents with which the child was traversing in the world you created is definitely mysterious. Abstract art, I believe, is the main theme of Guaratena's pieces, all of them are meant to be a fantasy-based alternative version of reality. Without heads and still moving around normally isn't something you paint as being alive. Or sculpture heads moving on their own, along with dolls writing messages or managing to be smarter than a human being is out of the question. Then again, if you the creator shares their soul in a sense to your own creations, then you would also have a similar split on intelligence and knowledge. Surrealism is another big theme to Guaratina's pieces. The mix and match of certain objects to make another object, or changing the appearance from the outside to look like something else, but acts the same. Now with the game itself, with our three main characters, as they're the main attraction of the game. One day, Eve and their parents decided to visit the gallery to look at the work of a deceased artist, Guaratina. After wandering around on her own, Eve finds a portrait called Fabricated World. After looking at it, she notices afterwards that everyone is gone. No one but her is here. The entrance is locked. The lights go out. Messages are written for Eve to go somewhere finds an entrance into the abyss of the deep, and we're adventuring now. After a few areas of puzzle solving and woes watering, Eve finds a lavender haired person laying on the floor with a key in hand. Eve finds the blue rose, waters it up, and Eve has a companion now to explore the fabricated gallery. Several occasions with helping on reading words out, a few areas later including puzzle solving, we find a blue girl by the name of Mary. After more exploring, we find a painting called Flowers of Jealousy, which separates the group of stone vines. One group of Gary and the other group of Eve and Mary, the story is now split into two adventures, though one of them is going to get hairy pretty soon. Finding out about the truth behind Mary, and collecting all seven paintballs, Gary is locked within the doll room, and he has a limited amount of time to find the key in the room before Gary becomes subjugated. In what I believe is the true ending, which is promise of reunion, Gary finds the key in time and escapes, then hastily hurries upstairs to where Eve and Mary are. At the same time, Eve is questioned a few times from Mary about Gary and their parents. Eve's parents, sorry in some attempts to prevent suspicion. Mary hears about Gary discovering who Mary is and becomes mentally frantic, going about randomly, stabbing her sculpture head, then eventually, when Eve finds an exit, Mary follows behind and looks to kill Eve to replace her. Mary's objective since escaping her canvas is for anyone to enter her world, kill them, then replace them in the real world. Gary comes in at the right time, stops Mary and tells Eve about what Mary truly is, going down the stairs into a sketchbook realm. Hiding from Mary, then eventually being pushed into the toy box by Mary, Eve finds herself without her rose and Gary is nowhere to be seen. Finding her rose and Gary, then manages to escape with Gary, 
then go back to where the toy box originally was. But then they realized the room changed. Vines in the way of the stairs. They're met with a toasty end via Gary's lighter. The pair go up the stairs, and Gary sees a familiar pain. Mary follows shortly after, fire spittingly enraged by the fact they both survived and found her painting. She catches them in hot pursuit, but Eve and Gary made it to the painting first and ignited it. Mary soon after turned into ashes leaving only the knife as anything solid. <laughs> Gary and Eve then manages to make their way back to the original gallery with a fabricated painting. Though the wall and floor colors have changed, the exit point is there. Gary jumps into the painting. Eve ignored her mom in the fabricated world and jumps into the painting as well. Eve and Gary returns to the real gallery and the real world as well. Finds Gary and a promise was made of a reunion, which I believe is not only for Gary to return back the handkerchief, but also for catch up in the adventures that they both witnessed inside the fabricated world. That's the main story outline I believe for what is Eve. For the other endings, obviously the flow of the game will go differently. We'll get to that in the ending section of the video. Next up we have... Deaths aren't a big factor in Eve, it's more of a one-way process with either Eve or Gary's Rose. If all petals are lost when in command of either of these characters, it's a game over slash death. There are a few occasions when the instantaneous deaths happen. I can name three different occasions. The rest though only take one or two petals away at most. In the grey area you have a black blue painting that requires flowers. If you feed it Eve's red rose, you require an instant game over as it takes away all five petals, or the number of petals you have left remaining. Just before the red area starts, you have the guillotine images outlined. If you're caught anywhere underneath it when it's hurling down, that's an instantaneous game over. Last one I can think of is the dungeon area in orange. You have the two roses that are active during sunshine. If you try walking to the door after it, you'll be bitten depending on the number of petals you have remaining, resulting in game over. Endings within the game that require certain characters to become dead or insane, those technically are deaths but they are more of an ending requirement than an actual game over. Details over this matter are discussed next in... Endings! Out of all RPG horror games, this is probably one with the most amount of endings to it. For I'd say that Promise of Reunion is the true ending, there isn't a confirmed true ending by the developer. So on that note, any one of the endings presented could be considered canonical. Kicking off with the worst ending in the game of for all three characters, a painting's demise. To get this ending, there are two main objectives you need to accomplish. The doom counter to be high, along with bonding with Mary to be low. Along with that, Gary needs to lose within the doll room when searching for the key and escape. It takes less time to lose within the doll room when kicking the doll rather than just moving it within the long purple corridor beforehand. Just remember to save in a different slot or don't save at all after losing. Or prepare to start the game from scratch if you lose in a doll room and don't have any spare save files to resort back. As there's no going back for you. I say this is the worst ending as all three characters either lose their sanity or die out due to the darkness taking over. This is one of the times when Eve shows affection for Gary and she calls out for his name for help, along with Eve too, oh and father afterwards, who we know as Guaratine. After the cutscene plays in the doll room, Mary leaves the room and exits the fabricated world into the real world. Or so it seems. Mary's plan to go to the real world didn't go well. She's noticed along the way to both not go there, along with coming back to where she was. Unsure on the personnel who's writing the notes, because beforehand for Eve, I'm pretty sure it was Mary who's writing those, but for the blue ones after Mary, quote unquote, escapes, it could be Gary writing those. The other possibility are the other paintings that want Mary back. But unfortunately, after escaping, there is no point of return. The next ending is Welcome to the World of Groatina, 
which requires exactly the same conditions in regards to Gary, but the requirements for Mary are on the opposite end of the scale. Make Eve and Mary's affection for one another high, and the same cutscenes happen, except when Mary leaves room, she immediately comes back in afterwards. A drawing party happens when Mary's two new friends, along with the other living creations of Gruatina, Mary throws Gar Gary's lighter to the trash, and an eternal loop happens. A loop of endless sadness for Eve and Gary, along with Mary enjoying her time in the fabricated world with her new two friends. We have now the Eve All Alone ending. This one has four different variations to it, where the requirements for each one are quite different. The first one which I believe is the easiest to discover is when you attempt to leave the gallery with Gary for either the Memories Cranny ending or promise of reunion. A fabricated version of Eve's mother appears and tells her to be with her and not follow Gary, who she considers as a strange. Eve follows her mother, Eve's mother disappears, but Eve herself continues to walk west, and the ending appears. The second version is when you are en route to the Together Forever ending, where Mary is alive. When given the option at the fabricated painting, selects to not go in the painting just yet, and the canvas reappears and seals the paint. After that, the ending screen appears and E. The third version appears when you are heading towards the forgotten portrait ending, as when you are given the option to jump in, a fabricated version of Gary appears and tells Eve that there is a way of escaping, not through the painting, but elsewhere. Eve follows Gary and they go off screen. After that, the ending screen appears, and I believe like the mum, Gary also disappears afterwards. The final variation happens in the extra scenario, or dungeon area just after the final stage sign. Ensure you don't have Gary with you and sleep on the bed. When prompted, continue to have Eve's eyes closed during the time a set of dialogue appears from her mum and dad around the time of Eve's ninth birthday. Eventually, the ending rolls in and you acquire the last version of Eve All Alone ending. Next up, we're talking about the Together Forever ending, which requires for Gary to lose in the door room, but the doom counts to be low, low enough so Eve can knock Gary back into reality. This is indicated by a green rabbit in the room. If it's not, then he can't be saved. Another thing is that affection towards Mary doesn't matter. Ensure that you find Gary first in the toy box before finding Eve's rose. If you allow Gary to lose in the doll room, then the rose would be impossible to find in a toy box as one of the dolls already picked it up for Mary. Gary eventually dies from Mary plucking off all the petals on Gary's rose. Then follow where she went, then go back into the gallery and the ending will play after going towards the entrance. Mary doesn't like fire, along with liking candy, which she eats Eve's lemon candy gifted to her by Gary. Ending things off with the last two endings of the game, including memories, crannies, and promise of reunion. Both have the same requirements the size the bond levels between Eve and Gary. For memories, crannies, ensure to have Eve and Gary's bond levels low, along with Mary's painting burned. Afterwards, go into the painting with Gary and meet up with him near the rose sculpture, though the neither of them remember traveling through the fabricated world. For a promise of reunion, you need to have Eve and Gary's bond as high as possible, along with Eve giving Gary her handkerchief when prompt. Not giving the handkerchief will result in memories, crannies. After giving it, go to the same route through the fabricated world back into the real world. This time, Gary remembers what happened when he looks in one of his pockets and finds a blood-stained handkerchief with Eve written on it. A promise of reunions involved in the future, where Gary returns the handkerchief along with catch up on the adventures that they both had in the gallery. That's all of the endings covered within Eve's sir. Uh, hold on Flair, you are missing something else. Well me, what I am missing out on is the fan made modification to Eve, where it features an extra ending. A version of the game modified without authorization by Curie the developer, 
and it was soon removed from the web as the game was not meant to be modified at all. The green edition was released on a version of Eve before endings like Welcome to the World of Grotena and Penny's Demise came about. Eve Green Edition's unique ending was called Sacrifice, and also he had the ability to avoid going up the stairs when Gary is alive. Go back to the fabricated world painting, and Mary returns to confront with Gary, then it was up to Eve to make the final decision. Choosing Gary will lead to Memory's Cranny's ending, but you can't get Promise of Reunion ending regardless of the bond levels between Eve and Gary, as you need to burn Mary's portrait to get to the scene where Eve gives Gary her handkerchief. Choosing Mary, why would you, will lead to Together for Ending ending, though the only other option was letting both Gary and Mary escape. This is where the ending's name comes about. Sacrificing Eve so your two other companions to escape. And just like that, Eve tears off the petals of her rose so Gary and Mary can escape. Though the both of them showed absolute resentment towards Eve, even though Eve pushed them into the painting beforehand. Afterwards, Gary doesn't remember, along with Mary crying at the Eve portrait, along with Eve's parents not having any knowledge of memory about having a child. Also, Gary and Mary are siblings too. What a journey this video has been. And I must say that a lot of that might have been opinion based stuff, though I would say that that is a lovely overall on the adventures of After hours of surfing through my gameplay videos and trying to come up with something that fits everything in while keeping it as short as possible, this is where we end up. I hope you've enjoyed this video and remember to click the like button of this video if you've liked it. Subscribe if you are new to the channel and be sure to click the bell icon so you don't miss out on any videos of mine in the future. In regards to the next game, it was a really tight battle between this game and Blank Dream, so I decided to give the straw poll a miss for this week, and we're moving on onto Blank Dream next week. Look forward to that for next week on the 20th of May. Take care of yourselves, folks, and have a wonderful day. I'm going to give my voice a rest now. Bye-bye.